All right, good. So then, uh, so that's kind of his uh, kind of his uh, preface. So we've got, so we've gone over here the. Uh, you know, the forward, the preface to the book. Mm -hmm. And so we have a little idea of where he's headed here. So we can kind of jump in now to his introduction. And again, he's going to pursue uh, kind of the, the take of where he's headed with this book in, in this introduction. Right? Yeah. Yep. And it is called... Skepticism and Contemporary Atheism. Yeah. So, so um, Science and Morality, the Engines of Atheism, is, is kind of his focus uh, for... Uh, the first, uh, I'm sorry, the second and third parts of the book. Um, uh, he says that per perhaps the most uh, conspicuous uh, tra trait of contemporary atheists, besides atheism, of course, is that they're especially fervent about two things, science and morality. Yeah. Because, of course, what else would you fall back on? Yeah, now, now it's interesting here, you, you know, uh, traditional atheism back in the day, you know, you didn't necessarily, although maybe you could make a case that they were really concerned about morality. But what he suggests here is what really tipped the scales with regard to the new atheist yeah. is the 9-11 event. Yeah, right? so yeah. people like uh, Dawkins, Sam Harris, um, uh, Christopher Hitchens, right, uh, right. people along those lines um, uh, that uh, kind of rose out of, you're right, 9-11 uh, uh, allowed us to question a lot of things. But uh, it, well, it allowed them a, 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 to question religion with regard to morality, right? right? And yeah. and we we do remember. I mean, it, it was it was great for for us in the two thousands. Everyone was talking about uh, Christianity versus atheism, and it sparked a whole new set of books for us to go over, and it opened up conversation. And sadly, now in twenty nineteen, <laughs> it seems like we're going the other way, where everything is being put under. You know, under the rug, or, or uh, you know, you can't uh, offend anybody uh, again. So, right, right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ho hopefully, um, we 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 get that type of conversation back because I think it allowed us all to cl clarify and codify um, where we stood, and um, I, I think uh, we were all the better for it. We saw the uh, intelligent design movement come out of it uh, d during that time too, um, and really. Um, there were court cases for it. Whether those yeah, were, so, so they were bad, a little there earlier. were these conversations yeah, that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, the real um, take on intelligent design was probably late 80s, 90s, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, but uh, yeah. So his, his issue, he says, well, I think that science and God are incompatible, right? And so he says that um, uh, he wants to look closely at this line of thinking later, but for now, suffice it to say, he says that most, athe most atheists see science as underwriting their unbelief, right? And of course, it's he says here on the next page, here on page 21, it's only natural. Science and morality, then, are the drivers of contemporary atheism, uh, and, and thus this sweet spot, he says, in the debate between believers and unbelievers, right? Yeah. So this issue of science and morality. So the question, the issue here, what is the issue with regard to science and morality? Well, what he does is he takes us back to an, uh, you know, an age-old debate with regard to fact and value, the is-ought type of fallacy, that kind of stuff, right? He says, notice that science and morality fall along an all-important fact-value divide. Science tells us what is the case. Morality tells us what we ought to do, although some atheists believe that science also tells us what we ought to do, as we'll see. Humans, he says, seem to be hardwired, and so this is kind of an interesting point here <laughs> that he's going to make here, and of course we agree with it, he's going to appeal to Romans 1 here, right? Yes. Humans seem to be hardwired to contemplate both conscience, conscience and cosmos, mm -hmm. right? Even the Bible suggests this in the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, right, which says... Um, you know, what he says here, that we are, uh, he says, uh, that something in us is triggered by the created order causing us to see that God exists, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Yeah, yeah, so that's the, uh, the understanding that, uh, from a biblical standpoint, everybody knows that God is real, but they suppress the truth yeah. in, a, in their unrighteousness, and it causes certain actions from that suppression. Right. Because you're you're actively rebelling. It's not a, a passive thing. Um, it's it's something that um, uh, is 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 done by the very nature of of who we are. Right. Yeah. Right. And and that's the point he makes here. There seems to be something like a built-in, according to Romans chapter one, mm -hmm. a built-in uh, faculty that causes immediate belief in God, 
or would cause it if it weren't, you know, if it weren't for sin. Right. And so yep. and then in the next chapter, he says, so Paul moves from this belief in God, this issue of whether or not God believes and, and the fact that uh, we kind of see it in the creation. Um, in the next chapter, chapter two of Romans, Paul suggests that humans come equipped with a built in moral faculty, or as he puts it, a moral law written on their hearts, mm -hmm. right? So we have these two issues here with regard to belief in God yeah. and morality. Right? Big, 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 because uh, his, his uh, charge against uh, the, the Jews in chapter 2 was, yes, you have the law and you follow it, um, uh, um, not, not uh, complete all the time, so you're hypocrites in that way. However... Uh, those without the law, the, unbel the unbelieving Gentiles, they codify morality within their law or mm -hmm. within their consciousness. Yeah, and they yet, have the law written, he argues, right. in their heart. Right. Right. So, yeah. so things like <coughs> justice and um, fairness seems to be innate in man. And so our laws like uh, don't murder people, um, uh, d don't deprive people of their property through trickery, uh, having equal scales, uh, that seems to be a universal human concept, but still within that world of uh, this conscious-based application, um, they still fall short. They're still uh, acting contradictory to what even their their own mind tells them what they should be doing. So, so uh, you know, where does that all come from? It all stems from God writing the law on man's heart, uh, being made in the image of God, and so both Jew and Gentile can be held uh, to uh, God's standard of perfection and the right. need for a savior. Right. So that so so there's one standard, and both fall. Yeah. Both yep. fall short yep. of that standard. Yep. He says, in any case, we seem uh, uh, especially attuned to the wiles of nature and the commands of morality. 